Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Gerard Gatch, and I'll be the moderator for today's webinar on the topic of virus clearance and the carryover study on twin column chromatography system. This is one in a series of webinars on multi column chromatography for the applications in the production of protein therapies. Check out the complete series on the YMC Process Technologies YouTube channel. Now, we understand that you have limited time and you came here to hear the content, so we'll forego formal introductions of our company until the end of the webinar. Just a few housekeeping notes and we'll commence with the presentation. Uh, this presentation is a study where the virus clearance in twin column continuous capture chromatography was investigated and a surrogate model was developed using standard batch mode chromatography. The speaker will also show an assessment of the impact of resin cleaning strategy and the duration of clean in place solution exposure on virus carryover. We invite you to explore our other webinars that cover these and uh, many more attributes of the entire two column YMC chromatography platform. These are 15 to 30 minute long presentations by subject matter experts and available on our YouTube channel. This presentation will cover these topics. First, We'll have a quick review of the capture SMB process and how it works. Talk about the virus clearance study itself, uh, summarize the results, and then leave plenty of time for your questions. Now about the presenter, Thomas Mueller Spath holds the position of Chief Technology Officer at YMC Chromacon based in Zurich, Switzerland. Thomas is an inventor of more than 10 patents and has authored and co-authored more than 30 scientific articles and book chapters on continuous chromatography for biopharmaceuticals. Thomas frequently presents at international conferences as speaker and also co-chairs workshops on continuous chromatography. Please welcome Thomas Mueller-Spath. Thomas? Uh, thank you, Gerard, for the nice introduction. Welcome also from my side to this presentation about the virus clearance study. As Gerard mentioned, I will start this uh, presentation with uh, an explanation about the capture SMB process principle. Okay, so capture SMB is a process that uses overloading of protein A affinity um, resonance uh, in order to get fertilization of the protein A stationary phase. So this is achieved by coupling terms in series and by an interconnected where um, the first column material is breaking to the second column as soon as the, the first column gets saturated. And so this is shown here by these uh, red areas here in, in, in this uh, uh, schematic. And you can see if once the first column is removed, the second column gets partially loaded and is loaded to capacity. In single column capacity, and single typically the capacity utilization is only 42%, whereas in capture SMB it can be brought up uh, to 90 or even 100%. So this leads to a better uh, use of the resin. So we can uh, improve um, resin utilization, therefore save resin, and we can also save buffer. And the savings are typically 40 to 60%. Also, capture SMB can run at uh, can be run at a higher flow rate than single column chromatography. It uses two shorter columns in series. However, these two shorter columns can be loaded at a higher flow velocity than single column chromatography because we can afford having a, a broad breakthrough curve because we capture the breakthrough in the second column. So like this, we can improve uh, the productivity of uh, the capture process. Um, in addition to this interconnected phase, which represents the core of the process, the process also has uh, steps for recovery of the which will phase the process enters in, in the phase where the columns are disconnected. The first column, which is fully loaded, continues to be washed, eluded, and cleaned and the product is recovered there, while the second column continues to be loaded. Then uh, the columns take turns, and the second column now is the first one to be loaded with the first one in interconnected uh, mode. 
so that the second column is now loaded beyond breakthrough and the material breaking through from that second column is captured on the first. Then this uh, second column here is washed, diluted, and cleaned to recover the product and to re-equilibrate the column, while the first column is uh, loaded. The process has, uh, uh, is, can be operated in a cyclic manner, so it can be run for multiple cycles until all the starting material is used, or it can be used also in conjunction with perfusion fermentation to operate as long as the perfusion bioreactor is operating. There are also startup and shutdown phases, uh, which help to rapidly reach the steady state of this process, and also, on the other hand, to ensure that we get out of this cycle here and uh, to get both columns in a state where they are uh, ready for storage. So the capture SMB is the countercurrent uh, process with, for antibody capture with the least complexity. Least complexity, sorry. So we just have two columns here. Uh, this is an advantage uh, when it comes to validation, as has been shown in a separate webinar on the topic of, of process validation. The process is designed using a wizard design tool where we are taking breakthrough data, uh, which can be recorded on the Conticom system that is operating the capture SMB process, or can be also imported from other um, uh, programs or other uh, systems, and with this breakthrough curve, we can then determine the operating parameters of capture SMB, uh, that is the interconnected uh, loading time, the interconnected flow rate, and the uh, flow rates in in the single in the parallel phase. Um, so th this this is done actually by the wizard. So the determination of process parameters is automatic, just based on the entering of the breakthrough curve and the recovery and regeneration protocol. So with Capture SMB, we have uh, made some steps towards industrial implementation. Uh, first one is that we have um, these twin column systems available for lab and GMP scale. And then we have demonstrated scale up at numerous users. And the users are continuing to use the technology after that uh, demonstration, so that's very nice. Uh, we have UV-based dynamic process uh, control available that can respond to uh, changes uh, of resin uh, quality, for example, resin, age, resin aging, or can respond to changes in uh, feed titer. And then we have done various uh, clearance and carryover studies and process characterization and validation concepts have been developed. So this talk will be about virus clearance and carryover studies, and, but there are uh, papers also on the other topics uh, available in peer review journals. Okay, so generally um, a little bit of background of where, where virus validation is done and the downstream processing of monoclonal antibodies. So there are FDA guidelines saying robust virus inactivation and removal are uh, steps are required, and these can include, for example, virus uh, inactivation by low pH and also by filtration. And in general, in, in antibody processes, anion exchange steps in flow-through modes are used as they show good virus clearance due to the capability of absorbing DNA or RNA. And then these uh, anion exchange steps combined with robust steps, as the ones mentioned above here, they sh usually show sufficient overall virus clearance. Um, the antibody, the protein A capture step is actually usually not validated when it comes to virus validation of the downstream process. So again, what is validated are the pH and activation steps, the virus filtration step, and also the anion exchange step. So here, in this schematic here, we have the clarified harvest. The low pH hold is validated, but the capture step is usually not validated. However, um, due to the novelty of this uh, process, capture SMB process is just a few years old, it was of interest um, to also do virus uh, validation or virus clearance and carryover studies on this new 
type of uh, um, protein A captures them. So <clears throat> for this, it's important to know that when we look at um, the capture SMB process, um, although it's termed continuous chromatography, it actually has discrete product illusions like single column uh, chromatography. So the peaks are higher, the concentration of product is higher due to the overloading, but in the end, we also collect the peaks by threshold. Um, they come off when low pH uh, elution buffer is applied. So we have these discrete product solutions, and we can collect and, and analyze them the same way as, as batch chromatography. OK, so virus safety is uh, in continuous processing is a hot topic. And also, FDA has even published uh, some, some papers in peer review journal, which yeah really shows that that this topic is of, of high interest uh, to regulatory authorities also. So uh, the study I would like to show you is basically summarizing the paper from this uh, biotechnology and, and bio, uh, bioengineering journal, which is called Virus Clearance Validation Across Continuous Capture Chromatography, and uh, this has uh, been published in 2019, and uh, most of this work was actually done by uh, authors from uh, BMS and uh, to get in collaboration with Wuxi Uptech in Philadelphia. Um, the capture SMB experiments that are described in this work uh, were run on the Conicrom Cube system, and also in addition in this paper, it's described how a single column surrogate model was developed uh, and, and tested and, uh, on an ECTA. And two viruses were tested, um, MVM and XMALF, which are, um, yeah, well, very common model viruses for this type of studies. And again, the, the data is published in a peer review journal. This is, this is the link in case you want to uh, find it. OK, so in this uh, study, um, protocols for single and, and multi-column chromatography were applied which were very similar. So you can see that in capture SMB and, and batch, there's no need to actually use a significantly different protocols here. So you see that for washing uh, and, and illusion cleaning, so on, recalibration, uh, the same uh, uh, flow rates were used. And buffer volumes were mostly identical here. So there's, of course, a huge difference in the loading where, in this case, batch chromatography, the resin was loaded not to full capacity to avoid yield loss. So it was loaded to 50 gram per liter, whereas in capture SMB, it was loaded to 75 gram per liter resin. Uh, the bed height was combined in interconnected phase the same in single column and in multi-column chromatography, so 20 versus 10 centimeter, two times 10 centimeter bed height, giving uh, uh, the same overall bed height. OK, so a different representation of the capture SMB process is, is shown here. It's essentially, again, the, the four different steps of a cycle, interconnected phase, parallel phase were pro for product recovery, and then um, the column switch position so that the second column is load f loaded first, and then the second column is eluded. So you see we have two product elutions per cycle. And in this study, the product elutions were uh, analyzed separately. Um, so we have, for every cycle, um, two product solutions analyzed. OK, so the virus clearance study was run uh, in a way that uh, virus spiked feed was applied uh, throughout the, uh, the, the cycles, uh, throughout uh, four cycles that the capture SMB process was operated. And then in, in the shutdown um, in the last cycle, uh, there was just uh, one sa uh, sample taken because there's only one column that is eluded, while in the other cycles uh, there were f um, two samples taken per cycle because we have two product dilutions uh, per cycle. So um, this uh, shows you already the results from the first uh, clearance uh, study for the XMOF uh, virus. So here we have. Um, the uh, log reduction values for um, each of the product elements, 
And in comparison, we have the, the clearance uh, log reduction values from the single column experiment that was run as a reference. So you can see that very comparable uh, values uh, are obtained um, in uh, capture SMB and single column uh, batch chromatography. So this was a, the first uh, positive uh, result. And then for the, the surrogate model um, development, it was of interest if we could get to the same clearance values that have been that I showed here. So um, the surrogate model was developed, um, like shown as shown on this uh, slide here. So we have uh, first um, two columns that are connected in series on uh, the single column system. So this can be an ECTA. And then the first column is um, overloaded, like in Capture SMB, uh, with a sec the second column interconnected. So then once the column is overloaded to the same degree as Capture SMB, it is manually disconnected from the second column. So this requires manual user interaction here now. And then the second column is continued to be loaded. And it's actually loaded, again, beyond its breakthrough point now this then this portion then is, is discarded, but in, in the end we end up with uh, as the column being in the same state as, as it has been at the end of the cycle of capture SMB. So I'm going back here now. Now you can see that in the capture SMB cycle we have the same degree of loading here as in this surrogate model situation before we uh, do the washing, illusion, and cleaning. So then washing, illusion, cleaning is done, and the sample of uh, this eluate here is analyzed. And we can actually see that we can get in the simulated multi-column run a very similar uh, virus uh, clearance as in the batch run and as in uh, the capture SMB run. So this showed that um, the surrogate model uh, works very well in this case as substitute for capture SMB uh, runs in uh, yeah, the, for the clearance of this XML virus. And also we have similar results. They're shown in the paper. I don't have them here in the presentation uh, because we are limited in time, but we also have very similar results for the MVM virus. So now comes uh, uh, maybe the more interesting part when it with regard to continuous chromatography, that's the virus carryover testing. So previously we had virus clearance. Now we're talking about virus carryover because here we want to know is if there's material breaking through from one column to the other. Does at, so does at some stage not only material but or maybe also virus break through from one column to the other and somewhere accumulate inside the process so that we at some point we get maybe elevated levels of virus in, in the product element. So this is the, the interesting question that that we wanted to answer here. And the setup was of the study was now as shown here in, in the schematic. So first virus spike load was uh, load or was virus spike feed was loaded over a number of cycles, and then the virus uh, loaded feed was replaced by regular feed which was not spiked. And then um, the run was continued and until the shutdown. And every cycle then was uh, analyzed for uh, virus in the product dilutions. So basically what we want to see here, what we, what we, if there's a, like, a, a, like a fast degradation of virus levels in these following cycles here, or if there's a slow degradation, which is um, then uh, corresponding to a virus carryover. Okay, these are the results for the, the XML virus. So you see here initially Capture SME was run with spiked feed for three cycles and then four cycles with non-spiked feed. This run was done with a CIP hold of 15 minutes, so a rather short CIP hold of caustic soda. And you can see that within the period of one cycle, the virus is below the detection level. So it, it really takes one cycle until the virus is, is out of the system, which is um, expected because there's still, um, after it's switched to non-spiked feed, some virus in, in some feed lines 
of the systems um, and also the columns on uh, the system obviously contain product that still has uh, from pre the previous cycle spiked feed on them. Okay, so, but the, the important message is that this um, virus carryover does not take longer than, ex than the expected one cycle. And after that, the virus is below detection. Please be aware that um, this um, chart here now does not show virus clearance, but it shows the absolute virus titer, which is then the log 10 uh, titer in PFUs. So it uh, really levels decreasing um, uh, mean uh, are good here. And at some point, well, after um, we've operated with non-spiked feed for one cycle, we are really below detection here. Um, the feed log, uh, the feed titer was 10 PFUs here in this case. You can also see results from ECTA single column uh, reference runs, and you can see that the values are very similar for this virus. So this was uh, run basically as control. And um, this is a similar um, chart that shows how the run performed without the CIP hold. So there the transition takes just a bit longer. So you can see that here we have one sample where the virus is slightly above detection. So in this case, the transition period is 1.5 cycles, which um, shows the importance of having some CIP uh, hold to reduce the virus um, really below detection. Now, for the second virus, this is now um, the MVM virus. We can see that um, in a similar study um, that within one cycle, also the virus gets below detection. So this, again, this duration of one cycle for total virus uh, uh, removal is, is expected. And now this run uh, was even run without CIP hold. and. Um, this uh, shows that even without the CIP hold, um, we can get below detection very quickly. The feed uh, titer in this case was 8.4 PFU, so it's somewhere up here. Um, and yeah, again, um, this run with CIP obviously also takes just one cycle uh, until the virus is below detection. So. Uh, that's not shown in this presentation because, uh, well, we can uh, take it for granted that if it's without CIP, uh, it takes one cycle to go below detection, that with CIP, it also takes one cycle to go below detection. So that with running without CIP is kind of the worst case. Okay, so again, um, this shows the, the key uh, results of, of this uh, paper here. Um, so, uh, again, the data is published, and if you would like to do some more reading, uh, I highly recommend uh, this paper. And the key messages are that we have consistent virus clearance by Capture SMB, firstly, and second, that there is no uh, virus carryover with this abbreviated 15 minutes CIP protocol in both cases. And thirdly, um, the study also showed uh, that the surrogate model model worked uh, very nicely. Okay, so with this, uh, I'm at the end of the presentation, and like to thank you for attending. There is some time for Q and A, but before uh, going to that, I would like to hand it over to Gerard for some final words. Thank you very much, Thomas. That was an excellent presentation, and, and I know the industry is very interested in this topic uh, to advance uh, continuous chromatography and continuous bioprocessing overall. Uh, this presentation was sponsored by YMC Corporation. Since 1980, YMC has been a leader in chromatography, producing bench and prep scale HPLC and LPLC systems, packing resins, and columns. YMC is a global company with manufacturing and offices in over 10 countries. Just a reminder that other aspects of, of this topic on continuous chromatography, multi-column uh, processing are covered in focus webinars that are available on our YouTube site. Uh, so just go to the YouTube uh, site and search on YMC Process Technologies 
It will bring up a number of these uh, very uh, succinct uh, webinars uh, around topics that are, uh, you may have specific interest in automation and process characterization, um, reports, recipes, uh, sequential batch operation, et cetera. Okay, uh, I'd like to bring Thomas back for the Q&A and we do have a number of good questions. There's still room for some other questions if you want to uh, type your questions in now. So Thomas, the first question is, uh, it says, just curious if you've carried out any studies on the impact of varying feed titers on viral clearance. Um, yeah, so it was not done in uh, the frame of uh, this study. Um, however, um, we think that uh, the feed titer does not play such a big role in, in virus clearance in this case, um, as we would uh, load the columns to a similar extent. Well, it depends. So it would be actually interesting to do this um, study, but uh, it has not been done to uh, my knowledge. All right. Uh, in a similar vein, I guess this question is, um, does the high load in capture SMB impact viral clearance? Yeah, so um, again, so we have not uh, done any studies uh, looking at the um, load or the, sorry, looking at the feed titer. Now regarding the, uh, the load, even with the lower feed titer, um, the um, the, anti the columns would be loaded to the same degree. So let's say with a lower uh, feed titer, uh, the amount, the ratio of virus to antibody would be higher. So uh, depending on the mechanism of uh, how the virus is behaving in the protein A column, eventually um, we could see, let's say, that the columns are exposed to um, a higher uh, virus load. Um, so far, um, the higher virus load does not seem to uh, lead to higher virus levels in the aluate. Uh, right? So we have seen that um, um, log reduction values are similar and overall virus concentrations are similar in the, in the aluates from uh, capture SMB and batch chromatography. So it seems that the elevated load does not have an impact here. Very good. Uh, next question. In one cycle, there will be two elution pools. While waiting for the second peak to be eluted, the first peak will be on hold. Can this be counted as low pH inactivation? Um, so actually the, the columns only see low pH when they are eluded. So I would say no. <laughs> so as the, yeah, for a very short period of time, only the columns do see the low pH in the instant uh, of, of elution. And during the other phases, they are either at the pH of the starting material of the feed or in a state where, um, yeah, actually yeah, they, they're under the conditions of, of the starting of the feed. Uh, yeah. Okay, next question. The total virus log reduction would be calculated as the sum of log reductions in each cycle or in each column? Yeah, so that depends on, on your pooling. So usually the um, virus is, or the elutions from one cycle from one cycle are pooled together. So it was just done in this study that they were collected separately to see really if there's a difference between um, the two columns and, and the, to the concentrations of virus in the two elements. And, uh, and the differences can be seen, so it, it does depend apparently on uh, column packing quality also to some degree. So it's good to um, take, let's say, an average concentration or an average uh, process uh, product quality by pooling the two elutions from one cycle together. Okay. Uh, this audience member has paid you a very nice compliment on your excellent talk. Uh, he has a question. Um, 
is, uh, uh, let's see, my question is different. Please let me know if you have any idea about how to remove HBV virus from purified proteins. Uh, yeah, so that goes a little bit beyond my experience. I mean, so uh, um, I, I, I'm not I'm not uh, familiar with with removal of of HPV virus. I mean, I can just refer to the typical removal steps of of virus um, like low pH treatment, solvent detergent, uh, UV irradiation, but uh, for the specific virus, uh, I don't know which ones uh, would be suitable. Of course, you have anion exchange and also um, virus filtration, So, but I don't know which one would be the most suited for, for this one. Very well. Um, what effect would there be if my media resin were, say, ion exchange resin and not protein A? Yeah, so um, this is this is an interesting question because it goes into a little bit into the direction of what the mechanism is of the virus clearance. So for sure, if an, if I have an anion exchange resin, um, then I would um, have absorption of the virus onto the stationary phase, which then would lead to the clearance. I I, I want to really to 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 see that when I operate anion exchange in, in flow through mode. Right, but um, what's what's very interesting here is that um, apparently, depending on the interaction of the the virus with the, the resin, we can have different uh, clearance results also in protein A chromatography. So as we've seen here, um, the um, let's, let's say the the effectiveness of the cleaning in place protocol in in one case with one virus could point at um, that this virus is absorbing onto the resin and therefore can be removed by the caustic. Uh, whereas uh, in the other case where the CIP did not make any difference, it could point at the mechanism that the virus is just flowing through uh, together with any unbound impurities and therefore the CIP yeah, has no, no effect. So uh, this is a very interesting question of how the virus uh, behaves inside um, the protein A column. It seems to me that there's, um, you know, like for the antibody, there's, it's basically an on-off um, mechanism. So either the virus is absorbing very strongly on the resin or it's, uh, or it's flowing through. But here certainly there's uh, more work to be, to be done to, to, to investigate this and in conjunction with capture and B, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's also more uh, work in literature about uh, this uh, uh, the, the absorption of, of virus inside the protein A column. Very good. That response, I think, also uh, answered another question that I see upcoming on the mechanism of virus clearance. Um, and along that vein, there's a question uh, saying, "Are further studies being conducted?" Uh, yeah, so uh, there are further uh, studies uh, being conducted, and uh, I cannot comment uh, too much on on this. Um, I mean, there's a, a typical way of of, of looking at, at virus clearance. I can I can uh, uh, point out that usually virus clearance is also investigated for uh, a resin of of different, uh, let's say, degree of aging. So that would be certainly worth uh, looking into. And um, yeah, so uh, this, this, has, this question has not been addressed in, in, in the study that, that I've just presented in this talk. Okay, we're gonna take two final questions and then we'll wrap up uh, out of respect for everyone's time. Uh, and the first of those two is, could one anticipate a similar, similar viral clearance on three or four column systems. Carry over. Yeah, so that depends on the uh, equipment design. So uh, generally, if uh, the equipment is, is, is well designed, one should not expect uh, that. Um, 
but however um let's say if let's say the complexity of of the of the system and an increase in and in fluid path complexity just um in, 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 or generally leads to more places where virus can can go and possibly where virus can stay so i um i could imagine that um virus carryover um could be um there we could see different uh, behavior on two to uh, the column the systems versus three or more column systems i wouldn't expect it so much for the virus clearance but for the carryover, they, I, I could imagine that there are some differences. And finally, uh, does the short bed height in capture SMB affect virus clearance? Um, yeah, so the short bed height in, in capture SMB basically, um, to our knowledge, does not lead to <laughs> The, uh, to a difference in, in, in virus clearance. So as we can see here, we have used two columns of 10 centimeter bed height versus uh, uh, one column of, of 20 centimeter bed height. So in the interconnected phase, we were having 20 centimeter bed height in capture SMB. In the disconnected phase, we were having 10 centimeter bed height. So um, there seems to be uh, no big impact here of the, the bed height on the clearance of virus. And again, especially if we look at the mechanism of virus absorption, in one case, if the virus is ending up in the flow through, the bed height would not play a role at all. And in the other case, if the virus is absorbing um, on the protein A resin, it probably does that uh, very early in the first couple of centimeters on the, on the column so that also the bed height wouldn't play a role. Thomas, I, I want to thank you for your presentation and also lending your expertise and insights into what is a very relevant uh, topic for the industry today. Uh, audience, I'd like to thank you for all your great questions and your participation. For those who have an immediate uh, application or would like further information on, on this topic, uh, you can uh, email info at ymcpt.com. That's info, I-N-F-O, at ymcpt.com. In a short while, you'll be receiving a link to the archive version of this presentation and a link to associated reference do uh, documents that Thomas uh, mentioned in his uh, presentation. Please share these with your colleagues who could not attend today's uh, webinar. And a reminder, this is one in a series of webinars, all of which you can find on uh, the YouTube channel. Just search YMC Process Technologies. We'll end our session now. Thank you and have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye.